Imagine this. It's 9 a.m. on January 12th. Inside a secure skiff, 16 members of Congress gather for a classified briefing with intelligence community Inspector General Thomas Monheim. The agenda? The riveting testimony of David Grush on UFOs. Post-meeting, at least nine Congress people step forward for interviews. Their unanimous message? David Grush is no ordinary witness. The UFO phenomenon is not just real, but gravely serious. Some even hint at a cover-up, with Congressman Tim Burchett openly declaring that UFOs are being deliberately concealed from the public. Now, consider this. Congressional members, known for their guarded words, especially after a classified session, are openly validating the severity of the UFO issue. This isn't just unexpected, it's unprecedented. It strongly hints that Grush's claims hold water or at least some undeniable truths. So who's this key figure in the intelligence community? The Intelligence Community Inspector General, or ICIG, acts as the guardian of ethics within U.S. intelligence agencies. This role isn't just oversight, it's about ensuring legality, transparency, and truth. And now, we're at the brink of something colossal. Join me as we delve into this unfolding saga where, instead of diminishing or reversing, the quest for UFO disclosure is accelerating, becoming more intriguing with each passing day. Welcome to a new chapter of provocative, groundbreaking revelations. Let's, Let's dive, dive in. 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 Obviously, you can't talk about the details of the, of the briefing, but um, I actually, I think there was some interesting information, and so I think that um, this is a topic that I think is a national security issue, and it's really important that there's disclosure and transparency. I think that's what the public wants. I think it's also a very serious topic, and so we've got to just take it with, with, with seriousness. It is, it is not a joke. That was Representative Robert Garcia of California, Democrat. Before we go any further, I want to say that a lot of these clips that I'm taking small clippings from were created by Jordan Clifford, DC video journalist for News Nation. Excellent job by Mr. Clifford. Excellent, excellent coverage. News Nation is doing a great job and, and Jordan Clifford is a, an important part of that effort. But going into this snippet, Representative Garcia said he received interesting information. He said that the topic, the UFO topic, of course, is a national security issue that we need to get disclosure and transparency because that's what the public wants. And then he says, this is a serious topic. This is not a joke. Now, let's put that in perspective. He was being briefed by none other than Thomas Monheim, the intelligence community inspector general. Six years after the New York Times article that accelerated the disclosure process, with, with all that information available to be scrutinized by the inspector general, um, by the United States Congress, by members of our government and our intelligence community, and yet the UFO topic is still as vital and as profound as ever. And in my view, this briefing that in total 16 members of Congress attended, maybe some of them didn't attend the full hearing or briefing, but in total 16 different members of Congress attended it, this would have been the time this would have been the moment for someone of the responsibility and stature, the intelligence community inspector general, Thomas Meinheim, to put it to rest. But that's not what happened. Nor do I think that's ever going to happen. The more this drags on, 
And the more uh, David Grush is, maintains his credibility, the stronger my assessment becomes that there's a cover-up and that we are not alone. One thing in particular that really caused me to be concerned about this whole thing is that Grush had stated to myself, Representative Burchett and another member on the phone, that there were people that were hurt hiding this information and keeping this information safe and or trying to come forward with this information. What I can tell you is I believe that claim after now leaving. How much that's the, all I'll say on that one. So that was Representative Anna Polina Luna, a Florida Republican. She was discussing the reports that people have been hurt for not properly concealing this information, um, as far as I understand from what she said. To add further weight uh, to that piece, I will show you a clip from the July 26 hearing where Representative Burchett asked um, David Grush about th this reprisal situation uh, as it pertains to people in the know about UFOs. Mr. Grush, thank you for being here, brother. Thank you all very much. Um, have you faced any retaliation or reprisals for any of your testimony or anything on these lines? Yeah, uh, I have to be careful what I say in detail because there is an open uh, whistleblower reprisal investigation on my behalf and I don't want to compromise that investigation by providing anything that may uh, help provide somebody <laughs> information. But it was very brutal and uh, very unfortunate, some of the tactics they used to um, hurt me both professionally and, and personally, to be quite frank. Yeah, It's very unfortunate, as they say, when you're over the target, that's when they do the most firing at you. Do you have any personal knowledge of people who have been harmed or injured in efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Yes. Personally. Have you heard, have anyone been murdered that you would think, that you know of or have heard of, I guess? I have to be careful asking that question. I directed people with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. Maybe in a, um, if we could get, it, get in a um, confidential area skiff we could talk about that but unfortunately um, we were denied access to the skiff and that's very unfortunate in this in this scenario so safe to say what was in the skiff was lending weight and credibility and more so to david grush's claims and for you and your colleagues those go from being claims or wild claims to to real substance yeah i, I would say that to, to, to put it, to try to be clear, there's, there's some validation of his of claims on process that in the process that it's difficult to get information to members of Congress or that it, information is being withheld. I think that that's been proven. I think it's been proven uh, prima facially the fact that, that we are having a difficult time getting this information and we're seeking it proves that claim. In addition, you know, I think that it's been proven his, what he said, that it's the information is being compartmentalized and that, and that the information is, um, um, you know, that there's a culture of fear and intimidation around this. So I think that that his claims about those are pretty bold claims, but they've, in my mind, been validated enough that it makes me wonder, uh, you know, what else of his claims are true? And, uh, you know, what else of his claims are true? The House of Cards is falling, baby. So, Representative Eric Burleson of Missouri, Republican, very clearly underscored that as a result of sitting in a skiff with the Intelligence Community Inspector General, Thomas Monheim, and being briefed, 
he's now under the impression that David Grush's allegations regarding withholding of information from Congress and, of course, the American public on UFOs is true, and that there's a culture of fear and, intim and intimidation surrounding this topic. And interestingly, if you look back at UFO history going back many, many decades, it's replete with fear and intimidation. Members of military, non-members of military, civilians, who have encounters, alleged encounters, but nevertheless, their testimony is consistent over and over again with being threatened, being harassed, being told not to say anything, being told that if you do say something, you could, you could be penalized in this way, we'll, we'll make up a story about you, we'll hurt your family members, um, we'll, we'll get, get you fired from your job, and on and on it goes. This has happened so many times, it's well beyond, in terms of probability, everyone just somehow believing they're being intimidated when they're not. And now we have members of Congress who sat through a classified briefing with the intelligence community inspector general saying, oh, well, yeah, that's validated now. Now that component of Grush's testimony is validated. I guess what I'm trying to say is there is no longer a reasonable debate or there's very little debate left on whether or not there's a UFO cover-up. Now, in the following clip, we hear from Representative Raja Krishnamurti of Illinois' Democrat. And this is on the January the 12th, after getting out of this skiff with the Intelligence Community Inspector General. And he talks about his response to it and the, the kind of information they were able to acquire. And from all the members of Congress that I've heard from, it appears that very little, if any, information was given about the substance of Grush's claims. However, regarding the allegations of reprisals, harassment, intimidation, and withholding information from Congress and the American public, and that's illegal, by the way, those allegations have attained, without question, greater credibility. And as Representative Burleson stated, he said, if those are true regarding Grush's testimony, what other elements of Grush's testimony potentially are also true? Do you feel as though they were more transparent this time? Did you get anything that you didn't know before? I'm more concerned than I was going into the skiff, and I think that they have a lot of questions that, that remain unanswered, and, you know, Mr. Grush uh, has made allegations that we're still trying to figure out um, the veracity of, and we haven't gotten the answers that we need. And what do you mean more concerned? I mean, they, 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 they stonewalled more, or what caused you to be more concerned? I, my impression is that, unfortunately, I don't think that we're looking at the substance of his claims, and instead we're kind of dancing around kind of the procedural nature of his claims. And I think that we have to kind of delve into the substance and kind of figure out what's what. And we don't have the answers right now. And that's very frustrating to a member of the intelligence oversight uh, kind of function that I'm part of. Now, I don't want to give the impression, based upon members of Congress's response to the briefing with the ins Intelligence Community Inspector General, that all they received were confirmation or extensive evidence on <clears throat> reprisals are real, there's a culture of secrecy and intimidation surrounding the UFO topic, and the intelligence community is withholding 
UFO data from Congress and the American public. There's more that was learned in the briefing that members of Congress had. And they may have received even more information than all of that, but it was a classified briefing, so they're not going to necessarily um, give us a, a perfect understanding of, of what was touched on. But here is a interaction that journalists Matt Laszlo had with Representative Nancy Mace of South Carolina, Republican. And uh, Nancy Mace is not the only one, as I recall, to underscore this. But here is a very good interaction that gives more insight into what was learned during the SCIF meeting. And I quote, Matt Laszlo says, if you have another public hearing, who would you want to speak to? Nancy Mace responds, I'd have to really think about it. There are a lot of folks we need to talk to. Laszlo, Pentagon or intelligence community, Mace, both. You can't do this without talking to the intel community. That's where the buck stops. Private contractors too. I think that private contractors should be on that witness list. I won't name names, but we have a better sense of who that might be today. And so members of Congress were told about private contractors and given names. So when someone like Representative Krishna Murthy said we weren't really given the the the, the confirmation of the substance of Grush's testimony, and that I think that's what he was getting at. What they were given were contractors' names, where to look, and so this is this was still a very important step in their investigation. They were given information on where to look for the goodies, that is, UFO recoveries, biological recoveries. And so in that sense, they are in a new phase of their investigation to get to the bottom of what's going on with UAP. So I want to return to the s subject of whether or not there's a UFO cover-up. In my analysis, at this point, the evidence is so overwhelming that there's a UFO cover-up that it's hard to take anyone seriously who tries to assert otherwise. This is based on decades and decades of, of historical record testimony. And then on top of all of that, David Grush's testimony, and then the inspector general of the intelligence community validating the idea, the proposition, that there is a culture of fear and intimidation surrounding the UFO topic. And then all of these members of Congress... Um, saying that that is what they gathered by talking to the intelligence community inspector general. So I'm going to share some clips. Um, two of them are going to be from members of Congress right when they got out of the skiff in their meeting with the inspector general of the intelligence community. And another one is going to be from a clip that happened a few weeks ago, I think it was December 13th, 2023, where the most powerful member of the Senate, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, conveyed that there is a cover-up. So did you hear anything in there that moves the needle forward, that changes what you thought before? Are they stonewalling you? Walk us through <laughs> what, what do you know now that you didn't know when you walked in? I just think what uh, the, most of the American people uh, fear is true is that the government, there's a concerted effort to conceal as much information as possible, uh, both from Congress and to the general public. As of right now, um, we didn't get into the specifics of that in there, but what I will say is that it has become apparent that there is a movement, whether it's within the intelligence intelligence community or not, to prevent us from finding out more information on this. And so we are going to do what we need to do as investigators to continue to pull on whatever strings and see where they lead. The United States government has gathered a great deal of information about UAPs over many decades, but has refused to share it with the American people. 
That is wrong, and additionally, it breeds mistrust. We've also been notified by multiple credible sources that information on UAPs has also been withheld from Congress, which, if true, is a violation of the laws requiring full notification to the legislative branch, especially as it relates to the four congressional leaders, the defense committees, and the intelligence committee. There's a sophisticated uh, disinformation campaign targeting the U.S. populace, which is extremely unethical and immoral, and it's totally, totally frightening. right now, aren't I? <sighs> Sorry about that. I didn't realize the camera was rolling. Anyways, in light of, of, of new hearings coming, which from what I hear, we're going to have some new hearings in 2024, which will be very exciting. This is a very interesting clip from um, that UFO podcast where Representative... Tim Burchett chimes in and explains what happened with the July 26 hearing. As you know, in the July 26 hearing, there were three witnesses. But as you'll see, Representative Burchett actually wanted way more than that. I think I'd seen some of your comments immediately after again from Askapol that it was a, a who and maybe not a where. And do you know exactly who you're going to be calling to potentially testify? I have some ideas, but I'm not going to share them because I did that the last time. You know, we were supposed to have like 12 people testify and only three showed up and they were all bombshells, by the way. They didn't bomb. They were bombshells. Um, they were great. And so I'm hoping maybe we... Um, um, I'm going to keep those pretty close to the cup until it's mandatory that I release those names. Not sure what that was about, but anyways... So it's interesting that Representative Burchett said that he tried to get 12 people to attend the July 26th hearing, but he, but he only ended up getting three. Those three people were, of course, David Grush, Commander David Fravor, Lieutenant Ryan Graves. Now, I heard, I don't know if it's true, but I heard that Carl Nell was going to testify that he was among those 12 people, but the DOD waved him away, said, do not do it. And from what I understand, the DOD intimidated the other witnesses that never attended that were supposed to. That's what I heard. Um, was it all the witnesses that were intimidated or asked not to attend? Was it a percentage of them? I don't have the details, but that's what I heard. Either way, I think that when the national security apparatus continues stonewalling, being deceptive, being misleading, um, frankly, lying in my opinion, and misleading the public on the true nature of UFOs, and this becomes more and more obvious and more and more blatant and brazen, that this is only going to lead to witnesses becoming emboldened, I think. It's not going to discourage them. A lot of these witnesses probably believe that lying to the American populace and the world at large is unethical. And so, you know, they have principles and some of them are just going to be driven to act when they wouldn't have been the way they will be now. So I am I'm looking forward to a very active 2024 with more hearings, uh, more people coming forward in and outside of government. Maybe some from the um programs themselves in fact i think that will happen um could happen on a multifaceted level but for sure it's my understanding that 
James Fox's upcoming film that's going to publish, I think, in either maybe in mid mid twenty twenty four of this year, somewhere around there. He's going to have firsthand witnesses. It's going to get real interesting if if in and I I will say this. To me, it's absolutely clear there's a cover up. I don't think there's much question about that. But I will submit that there is more of a debate on what's being covered up. There's all kinds of perspectives on that. My analysis based on the 70 plus year record and and what has been reported over and over again is they're covering up non-human intelligence, but we'll see, right? I think I think um the truth has a funny way of coming to the surface after enough time and it looks like uh we're in a phase now where Whatever that truth is, it, it, there's so much pressure from so many different angles that it's going to come to light sooner rather than later. Representative Ogles, can we count on you to help us get more public hearings on UFOs in 2024? Absolutely. I mean, I'm dedicated to it. Birch is dedicated to it. Luna's dedicated to it. Uh, you know, we kind of had this after action session uh, afterwards to say, what are we going to do next? Uh, I think you're going to see some field hearings. Well, you heard it from Mr. Ogles. My perception of what he said is that just this is just beginning. In fact, Representative Burchett said in one of his interviews that um, it's like whack-a-mole. And they just have to keep at it and, 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 and get the right people, ask the right questions. And I would say create the right legislation as I understand it. They are working toward more and improved legislation to put more pressure and requirements on the national security apparatus to come clean on UFOs. So the fact that the UAP Disclosure Act was largely gutted is not the end. This is only just the beginning. And maybe some of these members of Congress understand the stakes and they don't want to be remembered as being this close, this close to playing an instrumental role in once and for all, after so many decades of lies and obfuscation, commandeering the government to do its constitutional duty which is to serve the interest of the public and finally tell the truth about UAP, UFO. 2024 is young, but in the realm of UFOs, it is highly promising. And I don't think I'm overhyping 2024. We had a pretty darn good 2023 and I see the trend. And so I think 2024, believe it or not, will be even better. And eventually we'll get to the bottom of what this is all about. And there's so much more I want to cover. So please do not forget to subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. You become a patron. You become a YouTube member. You give me a one-time donation. All those potentialities can be accessed in the description box below. Or you can just slap a like on this bad boy and I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.